Hi guys, thank you for watching the video. This is the first one of a few that I'm gonna do. I know I've been a slow on doing this, but in winter break, I hope to do a few of them and post it. So try to watch before we start developing the app. Hope you enjoy. So this is gonna be a really quick video, an introduction to the JSON. You might be asking what exactly is, um, why are we gonna use this in our app, um, and stuff like that. Well, the reason is the cheapest backend service is provided by Google Firebase. Their Firebase is based on a NoSQL style. What it means is uh, the data, it's not a relational model. It doesn't work like, it's, it's not stored like in a regular mass, mass SQL database. It doesn't have tables. So the way that they do, they record it in JSON file. And that is why we're gonna learn and use JSON in our app. Another advantage of why they use JSON file is because it's really fast to search when you have a big amount of data and know all the data, it's relation to each other. Why JSON and not XML? Because it's a, it's a smaller file. There's nothing, XML and JSON, they're pretty, pretty uh, close to each other, but, uh, but JSON is a smaller file, it doesn't require to be compressed to make it smaller. And also the structure of the JSON is easier to navigate than the XML. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, it's a, like I say, it's a lightweight format. It's used for transmit and send data. It was introduced in 1999 as one of the uh, revisions for the JavaScript. JSON is that it's easy to read and write for human, um, easy to generate and parse, it's a language independent, meaning that um, it don't matter which, for which language you're working on, like Java or Swift or C Sharp or C, C++. Um, it, it do not depends on the language. But um, the creators decide to use some of the, um, the common rules for the uh, C language family. Um, so, as you can see, when we move along, the JSON file have two, two kind of um, two structures. We have a um, have a collection, as you can see, we have a collection here of Pikachu's. In this collection, is a name and pairs. So, in various languages, is done to an object or a struct. A dictionary, hash table, kill list, on an associated array. What I mean is that we have the name, we have the name here, and this is what we're storing. So we name, let's say we want to store um, a name, so we name this name, and we store here the name, and we're gonna see that uh, later. On. Um, everything is stored in a in an order list, so it kind of looks like this. Everything you have list here, list here, list here. In most languages, is uh, do as an array, a vector list, or sequence. The body of uh, the body of uh, JSON start with a left brace and ends with a right brace. Um, they they call that an object. That's why it's on the name object notation. Inside it, inside the between those braces, they they call it a member, and each member have a name, which is here, followed by a column, followed by what we're storing the value. And, and if we have uh, more than one member, we put a comma, and then the and then it repeats the name, column, and the value all the way until the last one, which doesn't have a comma and is followed by the brace.
grace. Um, it starts with the left bracket and ends with a right bracket. We can have arrays in our in our uh, JSON file. Um, so how it is is that we have somewhere here the name with the column. We start the we start the um, the array, and then we include the values each separated by a comma. And then when we end the array, we put this. And if we have another member, there's a comma here, and then we have more more members. The the values can store the following the following um, members. So we can store strings, we can store number, we can store objects, and ob it's, it's funny because you can have as many objects inside of a JSON file, and that's the, they call a nested object. And each of them you have to create. When you parsing, you will see you you have to do extra stuff. We can store array, we can store boolean. So boolean is this and true or false, and we can have a no, nothing, nothing in the value. I'm gonna show you this using this true API, the swipey. It's a it's a, a funny Star Wars JSON file in which you can look up like name like oh let's see look and it tell you information about, about Luke Skywalker or like R two D two they tell you this is it, the colors where the movies are all that stuff and then there is the same creator they the Poke the Poke API which uh, it's it's really big it have a lot of information and that's what I wanted to show you. The Star Wars ones is this one. I don't know if you'll be able to see clearly, but the objects are here and you finish here for one team. So in this case, um, I uh, look for for, uh, for Luke, and this is all the information they provide me. Now, some of the members you will see that are like uh, URLs, that means the um, that information is contained in another JSON file that we have to get from that. We have to get from that URL. Um, this one is for the Pokemon. Um, I believe this is for Pokemon number one, and I couldn't feed all the data. Data continues very long. Um, we have every single data that you can think, like from from what game was show. Um, all the stats, all the ability, all that stuff is in there and it makes a lot of calls to other JSON files that contain uh, more information. So I wanted to show you how it looks a, a raw file when you when you get it. And we need to un we need to understand the body to parse the files and we can use a tool like this one, Postman. As you can see, um, this is again the, the the Star Wars file. So start here and here. As you can see, it's more nicely. You can more follow it. Um, the file um, Postman do this nineteen that color code our stuff. So the names are color code in magenta and the values are color code in blue. So we have an array here. Um, this is an array of films. There are URLs as I mentioned and. It means that we will need to download that JSON file if we want to get any information from from the films. But I have some nice, nice easy ones. So parsing here. So after we understand the the file that we're gonna parse, and we see exactly the the elements that that we want from the file, because we might not want all the um, we might not want all the all the elements that the file provides. We might want the one or two elements, and then we just call another JSON file that's better and get all the elements. So that's why we need to know how how we're gonna parse it. So when we code, we actually only get the the elements that we want. Time for a demo. I wrote a, a, a basic, very basic Android application. This application, um, as you will see, it gets the, it makes a call to to a server online, downloads the JSON file, 
and then parse gets the elements that we want, parse the, the file, and it display those elements back on the screen. And the way that that, uh, that makes it call cool is that um, I made it for the Star Wars, so you enter um, a character name, and it will look for a file that have that character information and grab um, and grab the information. So let me let me load all the program, and I will show you. So um, this is take three, I guess. Um, I have to retake this because somehow I lost the audio. Yay! Before we go into the demo, let me show you. Let me show you the um, some things first. So, as you can see here, as you can see here, we have. We have the um, what the app is going to do. So it's playing. It's a very basic app that, uh, that it was written in Android. Um, basically make a um, web request. I pass a URL, and from that URL, uses a, a string reader to grab all this. This is the file that I'm going to parse. This is Star Wars file. As you can see, this is for Luke Skywalker. Um, the, the the JSON files are here and it's right here. We have few elements, results, it's a an array. As you can see here the the left bracket and it ends right, right here. This is where the uh, where that array ends. Now inside that array we have nested object. As you can see an object start here. Um, and it's right there, that big object, and then inside the nested object, we have more arrays. So, as you can see, home world, it's um, no, home, uh, not home world, but species is an array. You can see here, and we have other arrays that I would not care. So, I'm gonna grab the, uh, the name of the character, I'm gonna grab the height, I'm gonna grab the weight, I'm gonna grab a few of those things and then I want to get the name of their home world and I'm gonna get I want also want to get um, the name or the species but if you can see what they're giving me it's um, URLs so that means that for each of these two I have to make a new call download that file and grab what I need from that file and for both of them sorry about that for both of them um, I'm gonna grab the 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 value that's holding the name of the planet and the name of the species. They have a bunch of other information for each of them, but I don't care about that right now because I only care for base information for the characters. Here are a screenshot of the app. Um, very basic. Enter name, click it, and it displays right here the information. So let me open the the app. And, um, and I can show you the code and I can show you running the app. So here is the code as you can see here. We have this function called find character. This is uh, when you click the button, this is what what triggers all, all, all the thing. Um, I have some basic string cleaning. Uh, don't worry about that right now. It's just to minimize the cases where the app can crash. So once uh, once that happen, once you click, it goes. This is what triggers all that. So it goes to this try. Um, Java have um, and a lot of other language have um, this uh, area where they call try try and catch. And the reason is um, if there is an error, it's gonna catch over here and it's gonna minimize the the action for the app to close down. And um, it calls out this um, this um, class called download task and execute it. Um, the reason is when we do internet connection on Android and um, in other mobile devices, we need to do it on asynchronous. What I mean is we don't want the app to look like froze. 
until we finish downloading, we want to let you do other stuff on the app, clicking all this stuff while that is happening in the background and then it shows you or do whatever it needs once that finish. So let's go to let's go to the to the code. So here's this class. Um, it has this uh, function that runs automatically um, called doing background, and it's, it's actually the name says what it's doing. So this one is when you enter the name and you click the button, it passes to this function called doing the background. It makes a new URL. Um, opens a HTML connection to to get to that URL and then we have our input stream. It, this, this next step it looks pretty close to reading a file in C. So we have this input stream and, and then we have the input stream uh, reader and we get every character that uh, is coming that is coming from the website for us. Essentially and then we make this long, long, long um, string with all that information. Some more catches over here in case uh, we pass a, a URL that is not a good formatted one, or that there's an exception on the on the um, string input string. And then after that, it returns it returns this the string. And it goes and calls this function called on pause execute, meaning once that on doing on the background finish, it calls this one, and then this one is the one that actually parses our document. And again, we have a try, and the try is because when we're creating an object, so if the object is not a JSON file, then it let us know and, and makes the uh, the app not crash. Um, so it's not 100% bulletproof. Essentially, we get a result. It makes it say like, "Oh yeah, it's a it's a it's a JSON file. Let me let me uh, put the rules on it." Then we look, as I as I told you before, we look for that name called results that's holding all that array. We make an array out of that, as you can see, and then we have to go through the array. Now. You may asking if we go into the array and we're grabbing an object here, why do we have this and why isn't this is not crouching? Essentially, you have a build uh, this class a J array have build functions that help us. So, if element i have the name value name, um, all this think about it like a if statement. If they don't go through it. Just go back. Um, yes, it would check. Actually, checks each of them, but if it doesn't have anything, um, it doesn't crash or it doesn't create an error. So essentially, I grab the name, the height, the mass, the skin color, all that, like I say, and then the species is a as an array, and because of that, I needed to clean it. And that's what I'm doing here to make a URL, and then I. Make the calls here for the home world as I, as I told you, home world and URL, and grab that that only thing which is the name um, for the um, for the pass and the high. They're given on the metric system, and I changing it to the to the uh, American system or the Imperial system, and then I format it to two decimals. I, I grab all those things and make a really long string. Remember, this is a quick program. It's not very, it's not the most efficient one. It was made to show you how how can you rate and parse. So this is all this is extra um, native on the on the Android. In this case, it's the Android system. <coughs> so I make that very long string with all that. Uh, I have this character here, which tells us that Basically, before right before before you uh, show me this, I want to make a new line, so it makes lines. Um, I pass it to the uh, view. I'm gonna show you that I make it visible, and this is just helper function. So this is the code right here. Very very short, very sweet. Um, when we 
when we work in our okay I'm gonna make this big so as you see this is the app right here this is where you enter the name um, this is uh, where the results gonna be displayed right now it's very small um, uh, it's not visible when the program runs and this is the button so the button trigger the button trigger grab whatever is here make a make an internet connection to the URL so basically for what it was here and then parse it and then display here make this visible and display here as you can see it's a nice background it's a Pikachu and Pearl um, so let me pause this while I load the app okay Here's our emulator, it's not a virtual machine, it's an emulator, it emulates the, uh, the Android operating system and a predetermined device, in this case a Nexus 4 as you can see here and what is loading is actually installing on the, our app over there so you load up our app coming and here we go so as you see this is this is the app I can close it and load it up um, when I click here it opens the, the keyboard and we can enter something so let's see let's look for C3PO When we click here, when we click, this is going to hide. And there we go. You look up the uh, look up the information. And here, look over here. Um, I have this message over here. So as you see, we pass the planet and we pass the species. Uh, URL, I was doing checks because I uh, had trouble before loading those information. So this is what we passed. And it makes a diff uh, another call and load all this stuff. So we see species joy and the home world is the twin. This is all the information gathered from the first file. Since the robot, there's no hair color or gender. Um, let's do a favorite of everyone, I'm guessing. Jar Jar. So I have a look up Jar Jar. There it is, Jar Jar Binks. <coughs> Give you all that information. I mean, you can you can. Pretty much it won't crash as long as you put names that from Star Wars. You have a it's a complete database, so you have every name. Let's see, BB. What is it called? BB8. Is a new robot BB8? Um, I don't remember the name, but something like that. BB8. Yeah. Okay, enter a name that doesn't exist. As you can see, it crash. Um, it's very, it's, it's, a, it's a fast uh, application that I wrote. It doesn't have all the checks and stuff. And when we actually develop in our, I would plan to use a library called Bali for Android. And there is another library I can remember right now the name for the, uh, for the Alamo Fire. Alamo Fire. It's what it's called the one for iOS. Now you'll be asking why do we want to use a library and not do a native? Well, just like any other uh, any other team with the, in this uh, languages, there's libraries that are being tested and, they, and they're being fixed and they're used by thousands of people out there. It's in every application. That is very good. Because that means that almost every case that you can imagine, they have fixed it. Um, as soon as there's a problem, um, people people post it, and there's a group of people that actually works on solving all that. So it's pretty good for us. It also makes it very easy when we're writing code that we don't have to write a lot of that code. It's already written for us. That's it. It would.
and, and it will make for sure that our app doesn't crash. Um, that's it for us about JSON file. I hope you like it. And like I say before, I plan to to um, make uh, make other videos during this during the winter break. Um, and if you want to watch it to catch on before before the spring break begins is uh, really good um, and I hope to start the actual development on mid-January so that means it, that means that we have gonna have February, March, April three months and a half to develop the app I think we can do it in maybe two months but it's never too bad to have more more time to check um, it's a learning opportunity. If you have any questions about this video or any other, for specifically for this video, I'm gonna say um, write your question in the comment section, and I will make sure to answer it as soon as I see them. If you if you um, know the answer, you can answer for me. That will be helpful. Please don't 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 make a mean comments to anyone that's asking a question and you think like oh you should be know this already we are learning here and um, there's a, uh, there's a, all of us have different levels of experience so please uh, just be helpful also if you're watching this before December 13 uh, make sure to go to uh, our winter social it's the last event that chef is hosting uh, uh, this spring before it's the last before the semester ends. Um, you go to our to our uh, Chef UCF Facebook site and find the event. It's called this the social. Oh, sorry, I'm loading up to give you the right information. Uh, winter social. Uh, oh no, it doesn't see. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's a winter social happening on the 13th of December from 7 to 10 p.m. Um, the address is there. We're running a white elephant gift exchange. So essentially you can bring a gift between five and ten dollars um, and we're gonna exchange gifts. And if you want to bring ditches, uh, place that you may, I don't know, dessert, food or whatever, something from you, from your own uh, family recipe or something, you're, you're more than welcome to bring them. Um, if not, it's fine. The same for the gift. You don't have to bring any gift. Uh, it just will be nice. Uh, we're going to have fun. There's going to be music. Um, it's just going to have fun with the with the familia before the semester ends and before the new the spring semester begins. I hope to see you all there. Have a good day.